both as a coach and a player, one of the best things you can do is learn from guys who have succeeded at the highest levels. Today, I've got a D1 offensive coordinator and head coach as a guest on the show. We're going to talk offense and quarterbacks, and it's coming up right now. Hey, everybody. Mike Pulaski. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I love talking quarterback play and talking with guys who have succeeded and performed at the highest level. If you love hearing from guys who have done it, give us a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get all of our content when it comes out. And also, leave me a comment because I'd love to hear from you about what you want to see. Today, I am talking to a guy who played quarterback and played extremely well in college. He has coached quarterbacks for years. He has been a head coach at the FCS level. He has been an offensive coordinator at the D1 FBS level, and he has been successful everywhere he has gone. His offense at the FCS level led the nation. He has had prolific passers, great wide receivers. Matter of fact, he coached Cooper Cup. But Bo Baldwin, who is now the head coach at Cal Poly SLO, was the offensive coordinator at Cal. And I was able to talk to him just before he left about his thoughts on football recruiting, about his thoughts on offense, on quarterback play. And it's a great interview. Great guy. Absolutely love him. But had a chance to sit down with him and talk about the game of football. Talk to us a little bit about your offensive philosophy, kind of what you're thinking of as a quarterback. Yeah, as a quarterback, um, I, we do stay multiple enough to where I want to be able to create matchup situations for that quarterback you know by by doing a number of different things sometimes it might be spreading the you know field with five wide or you know four wide and a tailback but getting into empty especially if I feel like that's what a quarterback prefers and when it when I can you know we're multiple enough I can fit that but I also believe in at times you know tightening it down creating two three-man surfaces getting into 12 personnel and and deuce and and things like that because what that does then for the QB in that situation, obviously you get a little bit more in certain things in the run game, but sometimes it creates those one-on-one situations that 10 personnel and even 11 personnel can't create, and we can create them out of 12. So, uh, you know, there's a rhyme and reason for that, you know, and because and, and, uh, a lot of times you think, oh, you're getting in a heavier set just to, you know, just to pound it or just to run it. Well, a lot of times, no, it might be just to, you know, so the defense has to declare. Are we still going to go two over one on that wide out, which is really going to make a short gap scheme in the run game, or are we going to give them a one-on-one situation? So um, a lot of what we do offensively, though, and we've had different types of quarterbacks, you know, become very successful, really determines on what I believe their, that quarterback's strengths and weaknesses are. Right, and if, if you guys don't know 10 personnel, 12 personnel, all that stuff, you can look at our videos, talk about, you know, uh, denoting offensive sets, denoting what you're looking at on offense. Um, when a quarterback comes in, mm-hmm. how would you like them to think coming into your offense, right? So, so many times when kids come out of high school, they're thinking playmakers, I'm mm-hmm. big throw. Mm-hmm. How would you like a quarterback to think? I want him to think, you know, in terms of being able to, you know, start out with a lot of our progression stuff and being able, being able to confidently get through first read, second read, third read, even if they don't always know exactly what the defense is doing and then just and I don't mean that they you want them to continue not knowing right, exactly right, right, right. but there's a but level of start. that sometimes when you start is it post safety is it split safety you know getting a feel for that is it an odd front is it an even front so who would I be hot off of do I need to redirect the protection but there are times like I said where it could be a post safety look and we can even watch a defense play and you can still argue whether that was three whether that right. was one it's match here this or that so I don't want them to you know get too involved in in that initially and then gradually get to there because I really believe if they can get into it and just have a rhythm and a feel to getting through a second read, a third read, and then things will come, they'll, uh, it'll just develop that confidence and knowing that they can have success and still grow in terms of understanding more and more as they go. And, right. and I want to put them in situations where they can play young. You know, and I think as an offense, I think if you don't do that, sometimes you're not putting yourself in a situation where maybe the best player can't play simply because he's young. I don't want that. So I want to create those some of those simple situations early, and then we'll progress with you know getting to that 300 level, 400 level type, type right. play. Right. And and 
just because you do get away with some and you're you're getting it doesn't mean you don't have to study still, right? Absolutely. So, so you want it, you no. want to you want to be able to get away with some, but you also need to study and yeah. keep learning defense. How important is it for a quarterback to be able to read defense to understand what he's looking at? It takes them to the next level, right? You know, and that's the, you know, it's 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 just when I talk about the starting point for me, the starting point becomes understanding what we're doing, and then starting to gradually get to understanding exactly you know what they're doing, right? You know, but uh, understanding what we're doing, then you start real, you know, recognizing more and more of what they're doing, and and it. It's it becomes obviously huge the higher levels you go up to and, and truly understanding what they're doing because it 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 allows you then to manipulate them with your eyes you know in a lot of ways and that's what you have to be able to do you have to be able to get to that level where we can you know because I do believe even though yeah we we're progression reading on some things and other things are pick a side other things are pick and stick you know single eye beater two eye beater man zone beaters we have all of those different type of philosophies but a lot of it you know and really all of it still involves levels of getting your eyes on those defensive guys right. you know and, and at times you know moving them and opening up spaces and understanding why they're doing what they're doing and, and truly seeing it not staring down receivers well because if you know what they're about to do then you can adjust on the go you can anticipate and so being able to anticipate knowing that I've got that post high safety I'm trying to get him out of the middle mm -hmm. I can use my eyes to take him out so important absolutely I have this argument with guys that don't think you should read coverage all the time I'm like as a quarterback you can eliminate three or four guys right. or two guys or whatever right. in the route and know where you have to work and then use your eyes to work the game it gets to a big picture of one of the common messages we get from coaches is think globally, mm -hmm. right? How important is it to think globally as a quarterback? Yeah, I think it's huge. And, and I think, uh, and I, I talk in terms of, if you're saying globally, I haven't necessarily used that term, but I you know, see the entire space, see in the entire field. Right. You know, I always compare it to you know, being that point guard. You know, and, and football's becoming more spread that way. And, and when you think about a point guard, you might, you might call a certain play, whether it's motion offense or whatever that, you know, I'm not a big basketball guy, but understand it enough. You know, but that point guard might come down and things might change. Right. And you have to have the wherewithal and the ability to, like you said, think globally or see the whole field to be able to then adjust on the run. Right. You know, and especially, you know, and be able to react, you know, and not just, you know, well, letter of the law coach, you called this play. Well, I get it, but they all of a sudden did this, this. We got to be able to get to plan B, plan C, and still make things happen. Right. We get, you know, we're a short side of the field. We get boundary roll up. We know we're going to get pressure from the short mm -hmm. side. That mm -hmm. guy's coming. He's not dropping right. into coverage, right? We know if we get a cover three look, that strong safety is over the top for a reason. That strong side backer is coming, right? So right. those kind of things globally, where one picture gives us the whole picture, is kind of what I think about for quarterbacks. Um, so many quarterback coaches right now put emphasis on throwing technique, passing technique. Mm -hmm. And what I tell kids, and I coach quarterbacks, and mm -hmm. I tell them all the time, throwing and passing technique is important, mm -hmm. but it's not the most important part mm -hmm. of the position. How, how important is passing mechanics technique for you? Yeah, it's one of those things where sometimes for me too, you know, certain things in terms of their, their arm angles or their motion, it's it's it can be at a level where I'm not really doing much with it by the time they hit me right you know because if you try I mean don't get me wrong you're you're tweaking some things you're shortening some things you're right. quickening some things but more important for me is just being able to again get their eyes and feet going in the right direction get their body in the right position transfer their weight being able to do the things that are important being balanced and being on time balanced, yeah. more so because you can go to a lot of different successful quarterbacks over the years they didn't all have the same motion right you know they didn't all but the ones that had the right you know the balance and the timing and the ability in my opinion to be able to change slots at different times and, and to work things that way and uh, you know finish with the upper body so a lot of what we do and you know our drills that involve that getting off the spot feeling getting off the spot getting your feet back set bringing your you know your eyes with your feet eyes with your feet you know and getting yourself through certain reads or working with like you said working a free one way but getting your eyes and feet back the other way regardless of exactly what that motion is right. yes there are certain you know universal things i don't want that elbow dropping down i don't right. want to drag the ball <laughs> through the, the mud throw, right? yeah i don't want to drag it through the mud and you know all that good stuff but for the most part there are levels of quarterbacks that throw you know from a little bit more of a three quarter at times and a little some are a little bit higher but they have the general principles where we're you know able to you know replace the left shoulder with the right the elbows coming through higher than the shoulder all those all those things are are things that uh, are important but but some of the exact mecha motion mechanics a lot of times those are 
you know, kids are growing up throwing a certain way. Body styles are different. You know, yeah. they are. Body styles are different. Yeah. And I compare it to jump shooters too. You know, and Reggie Miller, he wouldn't have changed his jump shot. Right. But you should. Right. I mean, right. by, by you should if you're. Right. If you let her, but when he's making it or if his timing's good. And I remember hearing Bill Walsh say that one time. You know, is he accurate? Yeah. You know, someone asked him that type of question. I still remember this oh, from a long time. Is he accurate? Yeah. So his timing's good? Yeah. So why are you messing with it? So why break it? I exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, and he's, he's exactly right. Balance, efficiency, accuracy, right? Three most things for a quarterback. Huge. Being able to get to balance in any position under yep. any circumstance, that will make you accurate. Being efficient with your arm is the key. If you look back at my college film, I was the Pac-10 offensive MVP. And I would not coach a kid to do that ever. <laughs> really, it was the long, you know, baseball mm -hmm. player released the mm -hmm. whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And so, what I do know about efficiency is, as I improved, I had to learn the technique because it wasn't big then. Right. But as I improved, my efficiency, my accuracy, everything got better. And so that's what you're striving for in a kid, right? Right. When you're going for that, um, talk to me about kids coming out of high school right now. What should quarterbacks? coming out of high school, what should they be thinking about? What should they be learning? What should they be striving for at the position? You know, I mean, I, I think, you know, again, they want to try and get, you know, do some of the things you're talking about. Again, a lot of times, if anything, they, they're, they're throwing motion, especially when they grow up you know, younger and the ball's a little heavier and all that is a little too long, mm -hmm. you know, and they grow up playing ba baseball, which is great. I'm not against it, you know, but one of the things they want to do is continue work. There's always going to be a circular motion. I don't right. care what. It doesn't just come from, right. you know, and for a while it was on the shelf and that, but it's, it's not yeah. realistic. No. It's, it doesn't, you know, there's a circular motion to it you know that ha that happens but again just trying to quicken it and shorten it as they get older I also just believe the more things they can do you know and you hit on it just with footwork and balance and put that you know it, it's just the ground up right and I just believe that you know and, and the more things they can do that and the more things they can do throwing from off their spot you know and that's what frustrates me you know with with sometimes getting the the seven on seven piece oh it's crazy. you know and i'm not against it i'm not but what i'm saying is create more situations even when you're throwing on air where you're having to work to that second read that third read and get off your spot get off your spot slide to the right do those things because Go put on game film. Just very seldom in the college football game are you able to work through read one, read two, you know, you know, hitch around the clock, whatever you want to say, and just be right there. You're having to get off your spot, and you're having to. I also would encourage um, just more and more working on not only that balance, but changing your arm angles. Yeah, because it's real. And if you're not able to change those arm angles, I just think there are too many missed opportunities where you could have made a play. Without a doubt about it, if you look at our videos that we talk about, these are mm -hmm. the stuff like linear barrier drills. This is like the plyo throwing. It's all those stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why we put those in there because jumping around, moving, and then having to get to balance to make that throw, that's the big thing you have to learn as a quarterback. Seven on seven, you're right. Love seven, as a quarterback, love seven on seven. It's <laughs> awesome. Right. And, and you love it because there's no rush. You can be on right. time. You can be on balance at all times. But being able to throw off balance, so important. That, that's exactly right. Um, in terms of recruiting process for kids, um, with everything they go through, the media, the mm -hmm. social media, everything mm -hmm. else, what would advice be to a kid who's getting recruited? Uh, you know, I, I think more than anything is stay patient and stay within <clears throat> the process. And, and, and honestly, I mean, it sounds simple, but just stay within yourself and what got you to this point right now. And what I mean by that is, is it didn't just happen. It didn't just go. So, it, it, you know, it, it came because of work. It came because of hard work. It came because of what you're doing. You keep doing those things. It, we're gonna find you right you know right you know but if you get away from that and what's truly important and what got you there then all of a sudden you know then then you you know you don't want to become try to be I, I guess you know bigger than what got you there in the first place and right. that's the advice I'd give those guys keep grinding keep doing the things you need to do when guys come to watch uh, again guys come to watch you throw keep leading your team keep doing all those little things that got you to where you need to be because there's no magic secret to being quote unquote recruited oh we didn't get the film to there we didn't get we see it all yeah we see it all it's just the point is to keep doing the things you know to just keep progressing each day yeah. don't have any because i've seen that too where all of a sudden you know it's it's heavily recruited at 15 or 16 and then you get caught up in those things rather than what got you to there in the first place right. and continue to do those things yeah. and continue to push because then guys are going to come in and they're not only going to see you throw and see you go through drills you know when we're able to go evaluate in a springtime but they're also going to see how you carry yourself and what you're doing because we're looking at that big time sure. big, bigger 
you know, we're talking to, you know, people around the campus, you know, what type of, you know, even people that aren't even associated with football, you know, how are they treating people? Right. What type of leader? Are Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody, you know, someone working in the lunchroom, I don't care who it is. Yeah. I'll go by and ask them, you know, because I want to know those little things because we're all seeing the same thing on film. And we're all seeing that, but how much is he working? How much is he continuing to, you know, hungry but humble at the same time? I mean, that's the best advice I can give those guys, you know, in terms of that. And, and you know, some of them, they have different backgrounds. Some of them grow up and they're with their QB guys every weekend and doing that, and that fits them. That's okay. Right. That doesn't make it right or wrong necessarily. That fits them. That's okay. Where other guys might be playing three sports and it's harder for them to do that. That doesn't make that right or wrong. But right. I think you have to be true to yourself and just understand that uh, you know that it's going to continue to take the same work that got you to that point as a sophomore, as a junior, through the rest of this time. And, and just to make sure that you know those, those universities, those places are looking at you, are seeing more than just the arm strength or that stuff. They're seeing all the other little intangibles. Right, you know? and incremental improvement, mm -hmm. right? It's, Everybody exactly. wants to get that huge, big, oh, look at how much better. No, no, no. It's, no. You, you improve this much every workout. 100%, yeah. 100%, and, 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 it, and, it, and that matters. You might be going to a quarterback guy all the time, and it, you might feel like, you know, I got a little bit, got a little, that's huge. Huge. That's huge. That's yeah. realistic. That's yeah. what it is. Right. right. We all want the penny stock that's going to make us a million. But that's right. In the end, we put in. You know, it's the it's the foundational stocks yeah. that just get us a little bit at a yeah. time. Get that you inch know that, every workout, and exactly. eventually you've got a mile. And, and that's that's the key. You're exactly right. Uh, you you talked about something that's really near and dear to me, and it's leadership. Mm -hmm. Right. Leadership is mm -hmm. so important. What you don't realize, and with social media, it's hard these days that. Teamwork, winning teams are all about chemistry. Mm -hmm. About 50% of it is physical, and about 50% of this is the chemistry of the team mm -hmm. wanting to win. Quarterback is a huge piece. He's sometimes the catalyst of that chemistry. How important is it to be a leader, whatever that looks like, as right. a quarterback? Oh, it's huge. It's everything. I mean, it, it's uh, you know, it just it goes above and beyond. You know, it it. it it separates you from being the talented guy with a great arm compared to being the guy who can lead a team to championships mm -hmm. and the guy who can keep, you know, the locker room in that chemistry that you want, you know, as opposed to sometimes, you know, it could go the other way and no matter how talented it can shatter it just based on, you know, your mindset. So and and it's hard sometimes because guys maybe don't always know what that looks like or what that is, you how know, that that's feels. how that feels at yeah. 16 or 17. So they try to. The advice I give more than anything is be authentic, be who you are, because there have been different types of leaders. And there's there's all sorts of things written on it. I can give you all sorts of right. characteristics. Here's the number one, here's the number two, and someone else might go, no, this is my number one characteristic for a leader. This is my, you know, whatever that might be. But I think the more you can be authentic and be exactly who you are and, and carry yourself consistently, that's the other thing I tell guys, yeah. carry yourself consistently. And then when you start getting in those moments where you see something, and you believe it's the right thing, especially if you've done things consistently and you're doing the right things in the classroom, you see something and you don't like it, you don't think it's right, then you start to have that confidence to open up and right. talk about it. You know, So that becomes the uncomfortable moments, but the more consistent you are and the more authentic in terms of who you are, you know, and that people see that, no, he's real, that's, that's who he is, um, whatever that is, and it might be different. It's gonna be different with different guys, and that's okay. The more then you can jump in and start hitting those moments, right. you know, those uncomfortable moments, you know, and, and, and also on the flip side, when times are tough, you know, and you know you got a locker room of guys that are working hard doing things, but you still go through tough times. Can you bring those guys up in tough times? Right. You got to look at that, you know, yeah. because it's easy then, well, I'm just going to start yelling at them. We got to pick it up, dig it up. But that might not be the right feeling, having that feel for what's the right message at yeah. the right time to pick the group up. Exactly. And to get the guys going in the right direction. You lose a big game rather than yelling and screaming, I'm going to reset mm -hmm. and grind. Right. I believe we can get it back, right? Belief right. is everything. You convince a team in your belief that you're going to win, and that team's going to win a lot more than it doesn't. And be the first guy to step up, right? right. If, you know, day three of two a days, day four of two a days sucks. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. It hurts. You don't want to go out there and you can complain, or you can put your pads on, strap it up, and go out and play. And that's, that's right. the key. As a quarterback, you've got to be that guy who leads that way, lead right. through example. Um, just kind of last thing with social media out there, mm -hmm. how should quarterbacks focus on their game 
you know, there's a lot of hype. <laughs> How should they focus on their game, social media? How should they kind of interact with all those things? I, I again, I, I just, it's hard for me to say there's a blanket answer. Yeah. You know, it really is. I, I think, again, it goes back to what I said, consistent and authentic. You know, and there's going to be certain guys. I've recruited a number of guys. Doesn't make any of them right or wrong. Some of them are constantly on it, and that's kind of how they're wired. And uh, you get it with our, you know, coaches and staff. You have different coaches that have different mindsets on how they're going to use it and how they're wired. And it doesn't make anything right or wrong. That's that's you know what it is. So I think again, they'll be inconsistent with it, being authentic with it. Obviously, being smart with smart with, smart with smart what you're with doing. It, yes. You know, just pause for a second, yep. like any yeah, of us. Exactly. You know, just pause for a second yep. before you you know do certain things, and just know that that's that's a piece of it these days, 100. percent But it's not. It's not again the true foundation and, and why you're going to end up in the place right. you do. Well, you and, know, and it's, it's cool. A tool. Everybody likes it's to see the highlight film out there on Instagram or right. Facebook. But have you ever recruited a kid from a high, highlight film on Facebook? No, right. No, obviously not. I mean, it might be the same highlight film that we watch, you right. know. But whether it's Huddle or whatever it is, right. but then we take it a lot further. Sure. Obviously, we watch game film. We meet him in person. I see him throw in person. Right. I see again what type of you know, kind of like what you said. If you got to walk the walk, if you're going to be a leader, that's what I always use the term consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of until you can, you know, you got to consistently show these guys I'm going to come every single day and work to get better and better. Those are all the things that are way past. The highlight might start something initially, yeah. but then it takes way more true substance. Right. You know, because you know, social media is not that true. You know, substance. We know it's that. wallpaper. Yeah, yeah, it is, and it's 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 what it, it and it and it gives us a chance. I mean, there's like I said, I'm not down on it in right. any way. You know, it just knows that that's you know that's just a small piece of it. Yeah, don't let the less important things become the most important exactly. things. Is really always my point. Exactly. Focus on the field. Focus on the team. Focus on the work. And the rest of it will come. And that's all there is to it, Bo. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very Appreciate much for coming it. in, Appreciate man. Always me. great to talk to quarterbacks, quarterback coaches. Fun. Love working the X's and O's. If you like getting insights from guys who have done it like Bo, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notified anytime we have new comment. Also, give us a thumbs up and ask me any comments that you have about what we're doing here. If you have questions, please send them in. I'll try to answer them on a video. If you have something good, maybe I'll make a video about that. But I appreciate you guys watching. Love talking football. I love bringing it to you at home. This is Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski. It's quarterback training. It's been great today.